Hakeem Habarim. Welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Bruff. You know who you are. And today is the fourth day of April, April 2023. And tomorrow night is the Passover Seder. So let's talk about Passover and Yeshua. And did, do you know that there is not one place anywhere in the entire Tanakh where the Messiah is referred to as either the Lamb of God or the Passover Lamb? Do you know that the Passover Lamb is not a sin sacrifice? Do you know that, according to the Torah, a goat is required as sin sacrifice? Now, we're told that Yeshua is the Lamb of God and that his sacrifice is what takes away our sin. <laughs> but those statements are contradictory. Only a goat was acceptable as a sin sacrifice, and Yeshua's sacrifice was a sin sacrifice. So how can it be a lamb? And to make it even more confusing, I don't think you will find the Messiah referred to as a goat anywhere in the Bible. So, well, is Yeshua a lamb or a goat? The answer is, he's both. Now the Torah. In Leviticus 1-7, through 7, stipulates there are five different forms of sacrifices. There's the burnt, the grain, the peace, the sin, and the trespass. Different Bible versions may have somewhat different names. But according to Leviticus 4, where the sin sacrifice rules are given, sins of the high priest require the offering of a young unblemished bull. Sins of the leaders require the offering of an unblemished male goat. And the sins of members of the Israelite community, the, the community sins, required a female goat as an offering. Now, there is an exception where an individual can bring a lamb as their sacrifice for sin, but that is only in the case of an individual. Sins of the leaders and sins of the community must be either a bull or a goat. Yeshua's sacrifice was not for himself, but for all people. So according to God's rules, he could not be the Lamb of God. Well, the answer to this conundrum is that his sacrifice was not just for sin, but actually is both the sin sacrifice and the thanksgiving sacrifice. <clears throat> the way the sacrificial system worked is that you start with the sin sacrifice, which cleanses you of the stain of sin and makes it possible for you to come into God's presence. Then you offer a holy burnt sacrifice. And that represents your commitment to wholly follow God. And finally, you offer the thanksgiving sacrifice, which, which reestablishes your communion with God. And in his presence, you eat part of that sacrifice. And that's how we know that the Passover sacrifice is a thanksgiving sacrifice. That's the only sacrifice where the one bringing the animal gets the share of the meat of that animal. Now, when Yeshua died... He was the goat, the sin sacrifice, and the lamb, thanksgiving sacrifice, because his sacrifice allowed us to receive forgiveness of sin, and once forgiven, we could come into communion with God. Now, we won't see the complete fulfillment of this dual sacrifice until the end days arrive. In the meantime, Yeshua never referred to himself as God's lamb, did he? And no messianic prophecy in the Tanakh referred to the Messiah as a lamb. Uh, time out, I know. You're going to say, oh, whoa, 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 what about Isaiah 53? Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be led like a lamb to slaughter. Well, yeah, he did, but that's not saying the Messiah is the lamb of God. It's merely a reference to how he remained silent. It was John who misused it to identify Yeshua as the Lamb of God. In fact, my research shows that the only person in the entire Bible to refer to Yeshua as the Lamb of God is the Apostle John. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if all the prophets and all the apostles, every other one of them, and every other reference to God's Messiah has never called him the Lamb of God, but just this one guy does, well, <laughs> then that's just his thing. And certainly not hermeneutically, historically, reasonably, or in any other way validated by the Bible. If Yeshua's sacrifice was only for sin, he would then have to be called the Yom Kippur goat, or maybe the goat of God, but not the Passover lamb. 
However, because his sacrifice takes away our sins, we are able to come into the presence of the Lord in communion with him, which was done through the thanksgiving sacrifice, the same one that we do on Passover. So Yeshua certainly is similar to a lamb. The blood of the Passover sacrifice saved us from death by marking us as God's people. And the blood of the sin sacrifice saves us from death by taking away our sin. The sacrificial system had our sin taken away, goat sacrifice, so that we could then come back into communion with God, lamb sacrifice, thanksgiving sacrifice. What Yeshua did was to accomplish both of these sacrifices at the same time, but in the opposite order. Why this way? I don't know. But I can say this. I am grateful for what he did, <laughs> no matter in which order he decided to do it. He may be referred to as the Lamb of God, but if you ask me, he is the GOAT. And if you're not familiar with that acronym, it means G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. Well, thank you for being here. And please share these messages. Subscribe to my website on the right-hand margin. Subscribe button here on YouTube. Subscribe here, too. Click the notification, the bell, all that stuff. While you're on the website, check out my books. Don't even check them out. Just buy them and then read them. If you like what you get here, you will like my books. I guarantee it. And please, next time you're on Facebook, join my group. It's called Just God's Word. But please click and make sure that you agree to the rules or I can't let you in. Well, that's it for today. So, Leetrot and Chag Pesach Sameach.